So as part of the restoration on this accordion, I decided to replace all of the rhinestones that had been set into the face. So in this instance, I'm using this technique on an accordion, but you could really use it for any application. It could be cosplay or just decoration, but whatever you do decide to use it on, it's going to be a big step up from the kind of flat back rhinestones that are used most commonly. Now I'm not sure if these stones were original, or they were put in by someone as decoration, but it's clear to me that at some point someone's tried to replace quite a few of them and not done a great job. Now one of the main problems being the angle of the drill bit that they've used and also they've been quite messy with the glue. So I decided to replace all of the gems because I couldn't find the, some of the exact sizes that I needed and I wanted to sort of decide on my own colour scheme. So I got a few different sizes ranging from about 3mm diameter up, up to about 7 and I pulled out all of the old ones. So the stones that I'm using are rhinestones, they're conical rhinestones, sometimes called chantons. These are actually surprisingly hard to get because if you look for rhinestones on Amazon you'll get just the flat backed ones uh, and these you tend to have to look a little bit harder to find. You can definitely get Swarovski ones uh, which are super high quality of course or you can go to AliExpress and buy yourself a million real cheap. Now these stones specifically are foiled which means that there's a reflective material on the bottom of the stone that reflects light and makes it look more sparkly uh, regardless of the material that it's set into, in this case, wood. Foiled rhinestones are always going to be the best choice for anything like this where you're gluing directly into a surface. So in order to drill an ideal hole for these rhinestones, I found drill bits that were 0.1mm larger uh, in diameter than the rhinestone itself. So I found the easiest way to do this was just to look through imperial bits and find some that were really close to metric sizes but just maybe about 0.1 mil larger um, and that's just to give the glue a little bit of room uh, to sit between the gem and the surface and the other important thing which was definitely overlooked by the last person to do this uh, was that the drill bits should be sharpened to 45 degrees so if you look at the bottom of these gems you'll see that they come together um, at a 90 degrees angle as you can see on this set square and the drill bit needs to follow this exact shape so I used a bench grinder to sharpen these drill bits and sharpening drill bits is kind of a skill that I'm not great at but for this purpose uh, the drill bits didn't actually need to be that sharp because it was a really soft wood material that I was drilling into. I'm sure there's plenty of other videos about uh, sharpening drill bits on YouTube but checking the drill bit against a set square I was able to get it to a rough 45 degrees good enough for my purposes. The other important point about the drill bit is that it should be split point which means that you'll need to grind four faces into the tip of the drill bit so if you can see on mine, you'll notice that it comes to a sharp point, which means that as you turn the drill bit, it's always that 45 degrees angle and it doesn't have a flat edge. So with your freshly ground drill bits, you can go and drill out all of the holes. Now you want to drill just to the edge of the tip and then a little bit further. Um, so there'll be a very slight countersink going into the hole and that will depend on the size of the girdle of your rhinestone. And the girdle is just the outer edge of the rhinestone and the, the widest face. So you'll just want to drill ever so slightly further than the tip and you can look at your rhinestones to try and figure out roughly how much this will be. And then I just set them all in with a two part epoxy like Aral Dite. Uh, this one is a two hour drying time uh, because I wanted lots of time to be able to adjust the gems and get them in just the right position. Unfortunately I did find that I drilled some of them a little bit too deep and this was partly due to um, having to get rid of what was left over from the last time they were there. Uh, but in general I think it came out really well. Um, my only concern in, actually is that it's a little bit too shiny and pristine. Uh, the main difficulty in restoring this accordion is how much weathering to keep and trying to decide whether I should go weathered and showing signs of age or just fully pristine and like new. And I'm trying to get somewhere in between, like really well maintained but still really old. And you'll see here as well, this is the side of the piano board that I actually replaced. You can see that in my previous video, so I'm really happy with the way that looks. So I hope that you found this useful, um, as I say I struggled to find any guides for this kind of thing. So I wanted to make this little guide just to help anyone who might be in the same position as I was and looking for some guidance. There should be a link in the description as well to a website that I found really useful that goes over what I've said in a little bit more thorough detail. So thanks for watching, check out the previous accordion video if that's what you're interested in, and if you fancy subscribing that'd be great. So I hope to see you in the next video.